I'm proud of my culinary roots, and Pies and Puds is the perfect way for me to celebrate them. So I'm delighted to be joined in the kitchen today by Nigel Howarth, a fellow northern lad who dishes up proper Lancashire recipes. Hiya, Paul. Hello, Nigel. How are you? Nice to see you again, mate. Good to see you. Now, what are you going to be cooking for us? I believe you're going to be cooking up something from your past. Yeah, I mean, my mum was a big fan of suet pudding. Um, so we've got a Herdwick mutton pudding with black peas, otherwise known as carling peas. I never had black peas when I was a kid. You must have money. They weren't I... a rich man's food, Paul, I can tell you. Well, <laughs> where about you from, then? Where about you from? I'm actually originally from a little village called Clayton Moors, but... See, when you say village, straight away I went, well, it's posh. A town, a little town, a little town. <laughs> city is what you need to be Absolutely. saying, mate. I was born in a city. So, do you want to crack on? I'll, yeah. I'll help you as much as you want. You step well, into You're step doing into all the hard work, I believe. Oh, you tell me. <laughs> tell me what to do, mate. Come on. Right, well, we're going to, first of all, make the suet. So we've got two to one. We've got self-raising flour, yep. we've got suet, a little bit of water and a little pinch of salt in there. So if you want to pop that and mix that together... So I've got the flour, suet. So what is the dish that you're going to do, then? Yeah, so we've got her with mutton. And mutton is, a, is an interesting product because um, it's only a, about ten years ago that they launched the Mutton Renaissance. And, and sort of said that why aren't we using mutton as a top quality protein yeah. as it was done in the past? Because yeah, yeah. we just got to a point where all we did was boil a leg of mutton, chuck loads of capers on it. Yeah. So mutton is an elderly sheep, yeah. minimum you'd say of two year old, so they call them a weather. And they're brought back down off the hills and then finished off. So finished off for three months, like a normal lamb would be. Yeah. And so it's a, it's a premium product. And here we've got some shoulder and neck of mutton. We've got the kidneys and we've got some mutton bacon, and that's basically the belly of the mutton, just cured, salt, sugar, a little bit of mace and pepper. Yeah. And that gives it a little bit of um, oomph. You're talking about something with a bit of age. I think we've aged well. You know what I mean, Nigel? <laughs> <laughs> now we've I hit think, our 30s. I wasn't going to say, but, yeah, you're probably <laughs> right. Nigel combines the diced mutton, the mutton bacon and sliced kidneys in a bowl and then adds the black peas. So what is it about northern pies and puds that I think is, is special? Well, you know what? When you get on the train from Preston... Yeah. ..and you get off the train at Euston... Yeah. ..you realise it's a lot warmer down south. You need hearty food up there in the winter times. And this dish is a real sort of Moorish, heartwarming dish. Nigel finishes off the filling by pouring a little water over the mutton mixture, which will later become the gravy. You know, I love gravy. <laughs> Everything goes into the pudding basin that I've lined with suet pastry. Using this traditional thing, you see the old, the old recipes. I mean, going back three or four hundred years, it was made with this stuff. Yeah, yeah. I just mean, need to sorry. moisten that with a little bit, a bit of water, and then roll out the pastry for the top. Best thing to do instead of a pastry brush, use your fingers. <laughs> okay, so you, I'll roll out the lid for that. Okay. It's the same thing, you know, not just hearty sort of meat puddings, but also there's also the sweet side of things as well. You know, and you've got the steam puddings yeah. and toffee, sticky toffee and all that stuff. Yeah. I mean, they're just fantastic, the flavours. Hearty, and they fill you up. I mean, it is carb to death, whether you're using a suet or whether you're using a heavy dough. You don't need to have, Paul, a huge portion of that because it's, it's rich. Speak for uh, yourself, Nigel. It's, <laughs> it's filling. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I got five portions out of that the other day. Five. Put, you know, we're, we're, we're a bit tight in our house, but five portions. You want me to trim that? Yeah, please. If you would. No problem. You've done this before, haven't you? Uh, once, once or twice. And then here, which is important, don't ever just put tin foil straight onto pastry or, or onto anything that you're steaming or roasting, because it can stick. Yeah. You know, so put a, put a bit of silicon paper or grease for paper, bob it over the top, and then you can just sort of crimp it round. And then we've got some string here. Uh, it's good old-fashioned food when you see, when you see a bit of foil and paper with my Christmas puddings as well. Yeah. Nigel steams his mutton pudding in a pan on a hob for four hours. Mary Berry was always the same. She was showing me how to do these little loops, you know, on the top. It's so cute. <laughs> do you know what is hard to do that one? <laughs> <laughs> Too complex for me. It looks like something you can take from the 15, 1600s, this, doesn't it? It does. I hope it, it doesn't does. taste like it, though. I hope not. I hope not. <laughs> Look at that. There you go. You can see it's taken on a little bit of the colour of the meat as well, so you've Absolutely. got that, th those juices have, have sort of infused in there. Yeah. Now, oh, that's, the, that's the hardest bit, isn't it? <laughs> right, now I'm going to leave that a minute and just check my sauce. Traditionally, you serve capers 
with mutton, but it just goes so well. So we've got these little non perot capers, yep. and a little bit of chopped parsley, and then we've got the black peas to go in the gravy, so we can we can bob those in. Yeah. So black peas, what, what are they all about then? Carlin peas, pigeon peas, black peas, or parched peas, they're just what they used to feed the pigeons on, basically, in the old days, but became sort of a staple part of the diet, you know, in the north of England. Mm. And again, when we're talking about the cold earlier, when it's really cold, they used to, they used to just make up a pan of, of parched peas, finish it off with some vinegar so it's got a bit of a kick there, and it's highly seasoned, you have that, and you can imagine round a fire and it's freezing cold and you've just got these peas and, it, yeah. and you've got your bonfire toffee. And those are traditions that shouldn't go. You know, yeah. that those are cherished things, I think, sure. anyway. So it, it links in nicely because because it, it does go awfully well with mutton. Yeah. So if you do it, if you're going to do a, a mutton stew, use Carlin peas. And also, of course, because it's a pulse vegetable, it thickens as it cooks. Yeah. So, so again, it'll break down yeah, and so it breaks, adds yeah, it. Yeah. Absolutely. So I'm just going to pop that onto our gas there. Pop the, uh, the capers in. You can wrestle that off if you want. Oh, right. And it's a very sexy feeling when it comes off, I'll tell you. Oh! Oh, hey, up. Oh, oh, dear! Well, it's broken. Oh, but look at that inside, though. I'm going to patch that up. Patched up pod. I can work my magic on this. Let's finish it off now. We're going to pop over. Wow. I love you, Nigel. Just want you to know that. Thank you, Paul. That's proper food. I didn't food. know you could. So pop that over there. So there you go, Paul. You've got Herdwick mutton pudding with black peas and capers. That looks absolutely stunning. Nigel's hearty mutton pudding is the perfect winter warmer. It's a real taste of the north and I love it.